Well, uh, Robert Louis Stevenson lived in Hawaii for a while, and I did too. Though not at the same time, but I want to read a poem of his and one of mine. Uh, one of his best friends there was this guy, Clay, uh, Andrew Claiborne, who, like Stevenson, was from was Scottish. And uh, Clay Horton had married into the Hawaiian royal family. His daughter was Princess Kaiulani, who uh, later uh, could have been Queen of Hawaii if they hadn't overthrown the monarchy. But there was a movie about her a few years ago. It was, I think it's on Netflix. Uh, but this is when she's 13 years old, uh, and she's about to go on her first trip to Europe and uh, to see Scotland, where her father came from. And, so Stevenson is, and she's a little apprehensive about leaving Hawaii. So Stevenson's telling her, don't, don't worry, you're going to make a lot of friends. And it says, uh, he inscribed the following lines in her red plush album. Forth from her land to mine she goes, the island maid, the island rose, light of heart and bright of face, the daughter of a double race. Her islands here in southern sun, shall mourn their Ka'iolani gone, and I and her dear banyan shade look vainly for my little maid. But our Scots islands far away shall glitter with unwanted day, and cast for once their tempests by to smile in Ka'iolani's eye. <laughs> Yeah, that was in uh, Waikiki. Where I went was um, a couple hundred miles south of there, a rainy little town named Hilo. Uh, so here's what I wrote. Robert Louis Stevenson got here before me. That's when they called it the Sandwich Islands. They spelled it O-W-H-Y-H-E sometimes. But he knew Princess Ka'iulani. He dashed off some verses one day praise of her person and her beauty. Not me. I got the former Miss Hawaii doing public service spots on the TV. She's pretty. But when Mark Twain was here, he hiked right out into Kilauea Caldera, up so close to the lake of lava, in the crater, Hale, Mau, Mau. He could feel the ground he was walking on start burning through his shoes. And here I am leaning on the rail, the park service overlook, checking my mobile device for the latest news. Jack London checked it out. He found himself a leper to write about. An archetypal symbol of his people's plight type leper, no less. Good work, Jack. But you know, that Hansen's disease is treatable now. <laughs> we got something it isn't. You see, uh, Hawaii Island, view from above. If you're facing west, it kind of resembles a female torso. But if so, Mother Nature has a lump in her breast in a spot called Pohakaloa. You see, they had to practice with that stuff somewhere before shooting it around over in Kosovo. Depleted uranium weaponry, don't you know? Rich in chemical toxicity with ionizing radiation to boot. We did it in a place local folks still think is sacred. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, Somerset Mom. You got your footprints in the jungle? How about footprints in the tangle of organic polymers down on Camilo Beach? That's where they used to catch logs floating over from the Pacific Northwest. Now it's a giant landing zone for the great Pacific garbage patch. Coffee cups from Guadalajara and McDLT clamshells from Vancouver. Plus the occasional toothbrush dropped from a cruise ship passing in the night. There's now more plastic sand on that beach than there is the old-fashioned kind. Jack London's leper, Koala was right. He saw us come and he ran for the hills. So the plague came from Asia, the same came from Europe. He'd rather have done without them both. Just climbing up through the fronds and stems and petals to bleed back into the earth that gave him birth, his secret to death, one last uncolonized act. 
Yeah, Koalala Leper by Jack London, the reporter. He says, They that preach the word of God and they that preach the word of rum have foregathered and become the great chiefs. Yeah. You can say Jack was the one who got it. And actually, out of all these writers, myself included, Jack is the only one who surfed.